Blog. We're here in Fultondale, Alabama with Joe Hurst, senior editor at Woodcraft Magazine, and we're going to tell you how to turn any ordinary garage into a great workshop, whether you're a beginner or whether you're a pro. Let's get started, Frank. All right. Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. I'm Joe Hurst Feischeck, senior editor of Woodcraft Magazine. Our October-November issue is an extreme garage issue and I am really excited because finally I got my shop. Now one of the most intimidating things that I found and certainly a lot of readers find is that they assume they need a shop to build a shop and that's not entirely true. Using these tools right here I was able to build most everything that you see right behind me. Now, if you don't already have these items, now's the time to buy them, borrow them, and just start making sawdust. Starting from the top, we've got a little circular saw. I chose cordless because I didn't want to be slowed down by a cord, but cordless, cordless, whatever you have, just start cutting. You'll want to pick up two saw blades, preferably a finer tooth blade for plywood and a coarser blade for going through the two by stock. Next up, I have a drill and driver combo. Now, if you can get it, I'd go for the two drill set because you have one set up with the impact to drive the screws, you have another one all ready to go to drive screws or just to do other drilling tasks. Next, you have a multifunction tool like this Bosch Combo. This one has a fixed base and a plunge base, so you can use it almost as if you have two routers. Of course, if you get a little tired of driving hammers and nails by hand, you're going to want to pick up a pneumatic nailer and a compressor. This is something that when the shop is done, you're going to be using in the kitchen or bathroom for installing trim and such. Last, but certainly not least, is this little Vica workbench. In the building of this shop, I've used it as an assembly table, a scaffold, the electrician used it to hang the lights, certainly serves well as a starter workbench, and when you do step up into a real woodworker's bench, it'll find plenty of uses all around the house. Take a look at these tools along this wall. It might look like I'm primarily a hand tool woodworker, but this is very much a power tool shop. Now, in order to accommodate all the machines in my space, it was important to work with an electrician right from the start. After coming up with a floor plan, I contracted a licensed electrician and worked with him to find a way that would make this shop safe and workable for a good price. Now, with his advice, I came up with a sub panel. It's a smaller electrical panel that's serviced off the main panel. It keeps this space separate from the power running into my, sh into my house, and it also gave me a lot of options for different fixtures and such. After the sub panel, we determined where we wanted to put the lights. And these are arranged along the shop side wall in order to give me the most light where it's needed most. Following that, we put in a few outlets right along the ceiling. One drop and one fixed outlet for air filtration and for any machines that I might want to use further away from my workbench. Following the ceiling lights, we had to think about providing power for the workbench and the shop wall. As you can see here, I have outlets placed almost at every other stud at a height that's convenient for working with the countertop and the workbench. Now that's going to be messy work. Electricians are going to do a lot of trenching. They're going to have to drill through studs. Once he's done, you can start working on the finishing touches. In this case, I used just quarter inch Luan uh, to cover up the trenching. I trimmed everything out with the same three quarter inch ply that was used to make most of the cabinets, put a little paint on the walls, and wrapped it up with a nice vinyl interlocking floor. Now, Joe, I don't know if your garage was anything like mine, but I've got boxes and I've got stuff all over the floor. So, 
I noticed you've got all kind of storage. I'm sure that helps you build this. Frank, I'll bet you lunch that my garage was worse. 20 years of collecting tools. I had so much gear and equipment that I couldn't walk from the front of the shop to the back. Well, you've got some great little storage units here, some cubby holes that you can store your tools and see them at the same time. That's a great idea. Storage is key. You want to put tools where you're going to see them, where you're going to use them, and someplace that they're going to be out of harm's way when you don't want to use them. You've got some wood stores here. That's a great idea as well. Well, what we're doing here is not only taking advantage of some wall space, but we're getting those boards up off the floor where they can't get damaged from the occasion flood. This is a garage. Now I've got all kind of Rubbermaid boxes and I know you've got some great storage areas for those too. Well this is a modular solution. I went and grabbed the cheapest plastic container I could find at my home improvement store and sized my shelf around it. In a couple more days I hope to put labels so I can be able to determine the plumbing supplies from the sporting goods. But that exactly was all of the things that made this shop a mess and now I've got a real wood shop. Now what kind of time are we talking about to put these kind of storage units together? Well it's a commitment but if you think of it as a weekend by weekend approach it's all simple work. The lumber rack I was able to put up in a couple of hours. The shelving with the modular boxes those took those took the better part of a weekend. Uh, Tommy's cabinet and the cabinets back here with the with the miter saw station they take more time but as you get the tools off the floor you start using them again it's going to get faster and faster like a snowball. Wow. Now you've got one more piece right behind this wall here let's take a look at that for your wood storage. Okay this Bosch sliding saw isn't cheap but I found it as a very economical solution for a problem I had with lumber storage. As you can see the articulated arm doesn't slide back like a lot of sliding saws. Most saws have a rod which requires an extra 8 to 12 inches of clearance. By not having that rod, I was able to put storage on the back face of this cabinet. The entire unit is on six casters and by rolling it out you can see that I have a veritable lumber yard worth of stock between the lumber rack behind the cabinet and the additional lumber racks attached to the wall I can store several hundred board feet. Joe, you've really tackled this solution for storage in, in your new wood shop. Uh, you've got storage in the back. That's fantastic. What else are you going to have for us? Well, this is the ultimate miter saw station. I wouldn't start on this project, but I've got a lot of simpler storage ideas that you could put to work in your garage right now and start making sawdust next weekend. All right. Well, we'll be back for more from the Woodcraft Woodworking Adventures blog. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Woodcraft, helping you make woodwork.